what's up? All right, so today I'm gonna be vulnerable, very vulnerable. I'm gonna tell you four or five things that I wish I would have known about two years ago before we started buying collections. It's gonna be brutally honest with you. If you buy collections, you're doing the side hustle thing, I'm gonna share some things that I wish I would have known and done a little bit differently. Let me go tell you about them. Why am I crawling in this grass? Okay, let's start with the first thing that I wish I would have known about two years ago, and that is all collections, all cards, and my profession and sports cards eventually end up in a closet. Now, some closets look like a glorious showroom and then others look like a dark dungeon. But what I've learned is that eventually, those particular cards or collections end up in some closet because somebody lost their emotional attachment. And this is the tough part about sports cards or hobbies is that they don't provide any functional use. So eventually that emotional attachment, it's disconnected and people don't care anymore. They become novelties. And when they end up in somebody's closet who thinks they're just taking up space, that's when there's an amazing opportunity for you to buy. Okay, the second thing that I've learned, and probably a huge trap that a lot of us fall into, is that comps, which is comparative values, do not equal sales for you, or for me in this case. Now, this is a trap that I normally can avoid, but in some past collections, early episodes of Chasing Cardboard, it's a trap that I fell into. I let this idea of comps dictate what I thought I should pay for a collection, and that is a very dangerous trap. It's dangerous because there are very few cards or players that are liquid at all times. Of course, guys like Tom Brady and Michael Jordan and Patrick Mahomes, their cards will sell 90% of the time and you can get a pretty good idea of what the comps will be for those particular players. But 98% of the rest of the market is totally dependent on you finding the right buyer at the right time. And finding the right buyer for a lot of those cards, most of those cards, usually means that you have to be uber patient and you have to be uber consistent. Now look, we've had collections that from a 30,000 foot aerial view look like they're no brainers. Take for instance, the football collection that we bought in episode 17. Looks incredible. We showed a lot of cool stuff. And in fact, that's one of my favorite collections that we've ever purchased. But here we are six months later and we still have 70% of that inventory that still hasn't moved because buyers of those players or those cards are very hit and miss and it just takes time to find them. So good collection buying, good negotiating, good understanding of how to use your money boils down to you being able to identify which cards are liquid and which cards are not liquid. It's so easy to fall into the trap to think that comps mean sales. When in reality, comps are just a barometer for the potential sell. Yeah, look at this guy. Gosh, here the commenters come right now. Get out of here, go! <gasps> yeah, these videos are getting tougher. Trying to create more engaging content. That's what they say, do things that are different. So I'm running on gravel. So the third thing that I wish I would have known is that very few people actually want to put in the work. I know that's a novel idea in this four hour work week, work life balance culture. We probably get more comments from this idea than anything else. It's always that random Joe Schmo is like, I don't get why they just don't sell those cards themselves. It's so easy. Just go put it on eBay, blah, blah, blah. It gets old. Trust me, it gets old. Okay, so I've escaped the comment mob here. So look, Look, we sell, we sell 40 to 50,000 cards a year. It is a daunting, grueling task. The amount of work to ramp up, to take pictures, to title it right, to know the nuances, to answer questions, to ship consistently, and then do it all again the next day. People don't wanna do that. So whenever somebody tells me that, you know, maybe I'll just sell this myself. I just give them a high five and I say, good luck, go for it, because I know in 90 days, they're probably gonna call me back because it's just so frustrating to commit to it. Can you do it? Of course you can do it, but it's hard. It's very hard. Selling sports cards is just way too competitive, way too nuanced to just flip a switch and go for it. You have to commit to it. So now anytime I'm going to buy a collection, my mindset's changed. I realize that I'm actually bringing value to them. I'm providing them a service, saving them the time 
them the frustration. Yes, I get my commission, but I'm saving them the hassle. And I look at it completely different and it's changed my mindset as I enter larger collection purchases. <clears throat> Anybody else in this country deal with mosquitoes so bad during the spring? My gosh, it's awful. The single most important thing, and this is number four, that I wish we would have really known at the beginning, the most valuable thing that you are exchanging in any purchase is not money, it's your time. Because here's the deal, the second you say yes to any collection, you commit to it, you're potentially saying no to so many other opportunities or collections. Maybe not because of funds or lack of funds, but because your time is being put into these larger collections. And so the second you say yes, you're possibly putting yourself in a position where you have no opportunity to say yes to something else. The number one thing you have to protect is your time. Let me give you a good example. In episode nine and 10, we purchased a six million card collection in Oklahoma. Incredible collection. We won it on a blind bid. We won it for $8,500. After travel expenses, it was about $12,000. And then after storage expenses, we were all in about $15,000. Incredible story. If you haven't seen the episode, go check it out. But that particular collection, while it looked, again, perfect from a 30,000 foot view, it took us two months just to figure out which items and how to organize that particular collection. It took us another four months, yeah, four months, just to get back to break even. So all in, it took us six months to get to the position that we weren't paying money out of the pocket anymore. So when you see collections and you see episodes sometimes with collections, you see the potential and that's a good thing, but you have to see the amount of time it's going to take you. If you'd have told me in that Oklahoma collection that it's going to take me between four and six months to break even from my investment, we would have probably looked at it entirely different. And we probably would have said no, because we realized the second we said yes to that, it took so much of our time that we had to pass on a ton of other good opportunities. I really wish we'd have known how valuable our time was earlier in the process. You're probably wondering why I'm crawling in these videos and honestly, I don't know why I'm crawling either. Okay, number five. It's hard to say this to collectors because look, we all get enamored by all kinds of cool things and sports cards. But when you're buying collections, and if I was to take a time machine back, I would remind myself every time I walked in the door to push the shiny objects out of the way. And what I mean by that is as collectors, as investors or flippers, you get so psychologically skewed when you walk into a larger collection and you immediately gravitate towards the shiny cool objects. And and like shiny meaning like the best of the best, right? You see a, a really cool top rookie card, high grade stuff, and you think, man, that's gonna, that's basically what it means for the rest of the collection. That's what your, your psychological senses are telling you. The reality is the shiny objects tend to skew how you view the rest of the collection. You overvalue things because you've seen a couple of really cool items. If I had a time machine and could go back and remind myself of that every time I walked in, it would change my ability to make better offers. The way that I've started to do that is when I see a stack or I start to build a stack of the really high end, better stuff that I can quickly value, I move it to the side. I separate it from the more common stuff that really is the stuff that will suck your time and many times suck a lot of the value out of the collection. So separate the two, negotiate, and think about them completely different by getting the shiny objects out of the way. I gotta crawl out of here. I do got one more bonus tip for you though. All right, so I got one more bonus tip for you, and it's a good one. Uh, it's for those dorks like me that like the metrics. But before I do, are you subscribed to our email list? It's a free list, we provide bi-weekly tips, updates on the show, uh, little things that we've learned, cool articles. If you're not subscribed, go subscribe, it's free. Click the link in the top right corner or click the link in the show notes and we'd love to have you part of that group. Okay, so the last thing that I'll say, let me do this from the other side. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna make this last point a little more 
dramatic. Okay, so there's four metrics that you have to know. I wish I would have known these a long time ago. It really it simplifies every collection that I buy. It's number one, what's it gonna cost, obviously. Number two is how long is it going to take to break even? A lot of times you don't know, but you can start to really understand that the more collections you buy, you wanna lower that number as best you can. Number three, how long is it gonna take for you to sell through 90% of the collection? That's basically all the collection. You wanna know how long it's gonna to take to move that inventory uh, through your, your warehouse. And then number four, what is the upside? You got market value minus cost. Very simple, that provides you the upside. That allows you to identify if the collection is worth it. Keep chasing!